Well, folks, it's been a long time coming and it feels surreal to say this, but hello and welcome. Lee Diffie along with David Hobbs, Steve Matchett and Will Buxton with you. <laughs> the old guy. The band, uh, the uh, band formerly known as F1 on NBC Sports is back together in these unprecedented times and it just felt right for the four of us uh, to get together and have a chat for you guys because you've been so generous uh, with your comments over the past couple of years. Obviously, Will is still working in Formula One. The three of us have gone on to do other things. But uh, let's go around the room and we will start with uh, age and beauty. Hobbo, you first. What have you been up to? <laughs> well, not a heck of a lot, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> you say that all three have gone on to do other things. I've gone to go in Publix every other day to buy tea and the newspaper. Uh, <laughs> That's about the extent of it. Everything's come to a grinding halt. So uh, not exactly busy. Uh, nothing to watch much on the TV. So, um, but I, you know, I started off selling a few books at the beginning of the year, but that all ground to a halt as well as all the shows being cancelled. So uh, one way or another, it's been very quiet. But of course, I am resting uh, now in my advanced years, I suppose. Uh, I suppose it doesn't matter much, but uh, it's all a bit quiet. <laughs> Devo, how about you? Oh, I've been absolutely flat out like the rest of us, no question about it. I mean, other than David, this has been one of the busiest time of my life, really. Yeah, uh, I must apologise for a start to our audience. I've taken my glasses off. You know, I usually wear my reading glasses down here. But to avoid the glare off the, uh, off the sunlight coming in, I'm going to put my glasses up here on the top of my head. But if I do that, I can't see the phone. <laughs> so you'll have to, you just have to put up with it, you know. Terrible eyesight failing, a bit like David said, so advancing years. Uh, yes, I've been, um, I've been busy uh, in a practical way, uh, restoring an old uh, boathouse down here at the, uh, down here on Lake Wiley. And, um, you know, it's been a very relaxing time for me. I mean, it's this awful, terrible coronavirus when it's just absolutely ghastly news. However, you know, in, in, in the interest of, um, social distancing and self-quarantine. I've been down here uh, in my house on the lake and really I haven't seen anybody for, for, for weeks. So I've just been plodding around the boathouse, you know, restoring that and restoring an old uh, 67 Starcraft motorboat as well. So it's been kind of fun for me really. Other than, you may have seen on Twitter the other day, other than hitting my thumb with a hammer, which was rather stupid of me. I obviously got out of the hand of uh, using hand tools, but I've survived the injury. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. I thought you were joking, but it was real. Sorry about that. Never, and on a, I on never a, on a, have a joke about hammers, <laughs> ever. <laughs> on, a, on a far more serious note, um, Will, you of course travelled to, to Melbourne for the Australian Formula One Grand Prix. You travelled quite a bit. That exposed you um, to the coronavirus. You shared with us all that um, tragically you lost your uncle. Um, to uh, COVID-19. We are very sorry to hear about that, mate. But how are you? How is your health? And have you been cleared? Have you been tested? Are you all right? Yeah, um, so I did a, um, a test. My partner and I did a test when we got back from Australia just to check that, uh, that yeah, that we, we hadn't contracted it because obviously a number of people in the paddock had. So um, we did a couple of tests. We had to go private to do those because they weren't available through the NHS. So, um, you know, better to be safe than sorry and, and to know because obviously, you know, I, I wanted to try and see my daughter before this lockdown started as well. So, um, yeah, just for peace of mind, we did that. So, yeah, we went to Australia. I spent longer in the air than I did on the ground. <laughs> uh, 48 hours or so uh, there and back in the air. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, what? It's, it's, it's a shame not to be getting any physical racing. But as you guys have shown on, on NBCSN with, uh, with the amazing iRacing with IndyCar, we're now in this incredible new sort of phase where, and I think we're really lucky because we all love racing so much. It's one of the few sports that you can replicate in the virtual world. You can't imagine, you know, Lionel Messi or, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo sitting on their couch playing FIFA. It, it's not the same. But when you've got, you know, guys from around the world, we've had legends races. We had Robert Wickens making a racing return yeah. last night, uh, you know, and to see that, to see what, what, what is possible, and it didn't look that different to, to a normal NBCSN broadcast from, from Barber. It was, it was amazing. So it's lovely that we still have, have racing to commentate on. Bobo, in all of your years, and Steve, in all of your years in the F1 paddock, can you, um, I mean, I don't want to date us or age us too, too greatly, but can you believe where we're at now? That we're, we're actually, you know, Paul Townsend, myself, commentating the last two weekends on virtual races. 
Well, thank goodness I'm retired because uh, I always used to enjoy the travel. Now you guys are just going to stay at home because all, all the top all the top execs at NBC will be saying, "Hey, we don't have to send these guys out on the road anymore. Think of all those hotels and airfares we can save." So you're doomed to be in that little office there of yours and uh, and calling all the races from all around the world. John I think, Bucket, I think it's, uh, it's it's great for all for everyone around the world that was ever told you have to be at this meeting. It's essential for you to be at this meeting. I think the one positive from all of this is it showed that to be um, complete crap. You can you can work from home and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the technology is fantastic. This is a, uh, you know, uh, who would have thought this? I mean, like, you know, we're talking about dating each other, but I can remember whether well, uh, stop me and everything, but I can remember not that long ago, uh, carrying out a test with Bannerton at Silverstone, and we had a problem with a suspension, and uh, Christian Silk our engineer at the time, I think now is working in Formula E, Christian Silk walked into the garage and said, I'm going to take a digital image of this damaged suspension and send it back to the factory. And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he said, we're going to be able to photograph it and send it back through, the, through our telephones. <laughs> I was like, well, this is completely insane. Of course, you know, now we're all taking tens of thousands of photographs every day and don't think about it. But that's where we've got, in my time in the school, we've got from... I had no clue what the engineers are talking about taking a single photograph to being able to hold virtually an entire Formula One Grand Prix season or an IndyCar season or, or a Formula E season or anything else. I mean, we could do the whole thing online. It's incredible. It is. Hey, well, don't, don't you think that this bizarre and unprecedented era that we're in, don't you think that it's brought out people's creative best? I mean, you've got oh. Formula One teams making medical equipment there in the UK for, for people in need. Uh, similar things happening here in, in the US, in Australia, race teams are contributing. That's just one side of it. All across the board, I think it's bringing out people's creative best. Yeah, it's, it's really lovely when you look on, online, which can be, as we've all experienced from time to time, a bit of a cesspool every now and then. It has its lovely side when people reach out and you know, share their feelings and their emotions and, and their love of, of the sport or whatever else it is with us. It's, it's wonderful and we love obviously engaging with people, but it can be quite poisonous. It can be a bit of a cesspit. It, it, does have its negative sides and what's been lovely with all of this is uh, I, you know, I caught one day Chris Martin from Coldplay was sitting in his living room picking up a guitar taking requests from people for an hour and songs he hadn't played in a decade and he couldn't remember how to and it was lovely because it was just it was very innocent and raw because he couldn't remember how to play them so he was sort of trying to relearn his songs and you know concerts from from back home as you said you know F1 teams using their rapid prototyping knowledge um, to essentially reverse engineer pieces that the NHS have needed. Um, so there's, there's that very useful side of it. But then in this time when, you know, keeping each other, our, our spirits high, just seeing the good come out of people. And, um, you know, even, it's mad. I, one of the most popular things I've done over the last couple of weeks is either watching game shows and shouting out the answers to the questions at the TV. Mm. That's gone down a storm. And the other thing is cooking. People love cook, like recipes. So I've just been doing cooking in my kitchen and people seem to love it. So, you know, if this motor racing thing falls down, apparently quiz shows and cooking, that's, that's the future. <laughs> oh, it's great, you know. Look, just Dave, look, at, look at David, he's turned into a landscaper, that beautiful garden behind him. <laughs> well, yes. Actually, hearing Steve, of course, Steve's always been a great DIY guy, do it yourself. So he's, he's very good with his hands and his brain, obviously. And so... I can imagine him restoring that old boat and his boathouse is great. Unfortunately, we restored all our stuff when we moved here to Florida to small out uh, two years ago. There's nothing to do. So I actually did prune a bush the other day. Of course, I, it was a Bourbon <laughs> Villa. It's got a Bourbon Villa. It's got spikes on it about an inch long, one of which, of course, pierced my thumb. But other than that, <laughs> it was a very successful prune. Stay but, away uh, from it, David. Stay in yeah. your seat. <laughs> gin and tonic. You don't want to start, start getting involved with those flowers. <laughs> yeah. No good will come of that. <laughs> hey, talking of Formula One technology and the, um, uh, the ventilators and the, the good that is happening in Formula One, I was talking to the guys from Renault the other day. They are working more all-nighters now than they were when they were putting the cars together. And I was, wow. I was just to a guy um, who was involved with, you know, because there's a big consortium of the teams working together on this, like Renault are doing the electronics and Red Bull are doing some of the assembly, McLaren are involved with something else, Mercedes are on another project, et cetera, et cetera. And the electronics guys from Renault were saying, 
They're, they're, they're all ready. They, they haven't slept in X number of days, which is a f fantastic dedication from, but they're already on version two of the software of the control panel for it. That's Formula One for me, isn't it? Yeah. We're already updated the original equipment twice already before we've even got the first, first ventilators out to the hospitals. That is perfect. Yeah. What a great story. Yeah, amazing. What a great story. Hobbo, how are, you, uh, how are you making the days go by? Well, uh, I tell you what, it's a very funny effect. Is um, we're getting up late, um, swanning around, making a couple of cups of tea. Uh, guy goes to the shop, he gets coming back the paper, so scan that a little bit. Um, sitting outside, the weather's been fantastic down here in Florida for the last month, but you haven't had a cloud until today. And um, so, but I can't believe I thought that when life slowed down, you know, and you couldn't do much, that. Um, the time would slow down, but in fact, it seems to speed up even worse than before. Seems to spend <laughs> my entire time, seems to spend my entire time getting into my pajamas, getting into bed, then getting out of them, getting out of bed. <laughs> I, can't believe, I can't believe how quickly the days go by. It's really. We always used to say, David, when we used to go to dinner. Uh, together <laughs> yeah we used to say where does the time go it speeds by you're absolutely right you know funny enough i was having a similar thought the other day I thought, i'm getting into bed getting out of bed going down to the boathouse getting back into bed again <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like that post-race show that we did years ago <laughs> at the desk in nbc and, and uh i can't remember what it was and i said something like can you believe it's already round 15 where is the year gone and you remember this well do you remember was hobo yeah. said where's the year gone where are our lives going? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's, and it's, even though we're all slowed down, it's still speeding up. I can't, can't really believe it. But anyway, I tell yeah. you, 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 Will, you and Will ago, a few minutes ago, said you'd been talking to uh, the Coldplay. What's your name, Chris? Chris Martin. Oh, yeah, he did a thing. He did a thing. Of course, he lives just, just around the corner from you, isn't he? I mean, he lives really right by you. Oh, what, me? Chris, Chris Martin lives just by you. Does he? Yeah, he lives just the other side of Banbury. Oh, I can't go and see him. because Well, well you we're... can't, but you could, you could always discuss it with him now, and you can make a joint. And when this COVID-19 uh, horrible scourge is over, you can go and have a pint with him in the local pub, because I know he's very close to you. I would love that. I, do you know what? I think we're going to come out of this very, in a very different way. Oh, we'd better come out of it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a very different place. I think I really think it's going to be a very different world. I hope so. I think I think I think it's got the capability of changing us all for the better. Really. Hey, Will, what was the um, what was the F one paddock? And I know you weren't in it for very long, but you were at preseason testing. Um, what was the F one paddock's response to the IndyCar Aero screen? Because these past two weekends with the iRacing Racing IndyCar Challenge, when we go on the the in car view. Well, the virtual in car view, we get to see it, and it's not too bad. It, it, it kind of looks a little bit like the halo with that the centerpiece, right? So it's not too indifferent to F1 in cars. What's the F1 world made of IndyCar's safety measures? It's funny. Um, a lot of people see it as just a halo with a, with a wraparound on it, and I always personally believed that the aero screen was the far better approach to take than, than halo because every future vision we've ever seen of where open wheel racing is going is is cockpit and i never saw how halo led us to a, a cockpit but i could see how aero screen might um i think they look great i think the indy cars look fantastic i know the drivers were struggling a bit with heat and i don't know if they're ever going to have those sort of the nascar type uh, tubes going into the back of the helmets to keep the, their heads a, a little cool um but yeah obviously it has caused a bit of a, a stir because now you know the two the two championships are off on, on very different tangents. Um, but certainly the safety, um, I think, provided by the aero screen in terms of not allowing debris to come through that aperture, which does still exist in Halo, um, makes it, you know, potentially, you know, even safer. And, you know, people will say, oh, it, it looks this, it looks that. You know, we said that with Formula One, and now you don't even notice the Halo's there. It's, it's just, it is what it is. What yeah. do you think? It, takes, it takes very little time, doesn't it, before any of these changes just become commonplace i mean look at the cockpit bolsters for example you know when uh, sauber introduced those you know when was that now 95 96 i think and all of a sudden you know people were saying the same thing oh the cars look terrible we'll never get used to this you couldn't imagine a formula one car being built without them now could you yeah. look so strange you know? well of yeah. course you you look back in the old days 
you look at any modern Formula One car, even before the halo, you can only just see the driver's head sticking up. If you see those pictures of Fangio, Marsh, Dan Gurney, of course, he was a bit tall anyway, you know, sitting in those old race cars. I mean, they're half the body's sticking out. I mean, it's not just the heads above the parapet. The whole body's up there. So, uh, obviously, it's all, it all leads to a much safer sport, which, of course, is what we need these days. The only trouble with this screen is, I, my, my always worry is, you know, oil coming the guy in front, gets on the screen, and that could make vision difficult, which might, which might make you have a pit stop. Uh, and there are all, of course, they, they could always have the pull-off screens too as well, uh, which would make that a bit quicker. But they're both, they're both a very good idea because, you know, we always remember Felipe Massa at Hungary when that spring just came out of nowhere and hit him on the head. I mean, and any of these uh, devices will help that. So uh, switching gears to sports cars, and this year at the Rolex 24, Hobbo, you were there. Um, there was a, um, an important meeting between the ACO, of course, who were in charge of the 24 Hours of Le Mans World Endurance Championship, along with the FIA and, um, and uh, IMSA, about divergence, about trying to get the same rules package for the, for the premier class of prototypes so that basically, ostensibly, the best can race at Le Mans and at the Rolex 24. Will, we're going to start with you. Good thing, much needed, long overdue? On the surface, yes, absolutely, 100%. You want to see the best getting out racing. You know, how much would you love to see uh, the Penske uh, team go and, you know, race at Le Mans, you know, take, take IMSA guys over and, and, and do Le Mans. Of course, you want to see that convergence. The worry is, will the regulations be right will it maintain manufacturer involvement or, or will it create fear and and people start to pull out you know they are just the aco and just announced their, their hypercar regulations for the future so you know there are massive questions over where this goes but in terms of is it the right path for, for the future yeah i think i think you know convergent divergence is is always going to be you know better than as we saw with indycar you know you don't want to divide a championship when it's all together it can flourish Although you did 20, 24 hours of Le Mans, good thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, the more you can get uh, a world, a real world endurance championship together, which will include IMSA, uh, and obviously the two great races, uh, the Le Mans 24 hour and the Daytona 24 hour race, which has been going now since 1962, because yours truly took part in that first race, which was a three hour back then. And the more you can get them together, the better for everybody. But, as in all these things, the devil will be in the details. Getting everybody to agree is not going to be an easy thing. But it's, um, obviously, you know, I think overall it can't be anything but good. That that the only difficulty is going to be how how we're actually going to do it. You know. And Steve, you put on you put on your overalls again. Get back in your team gear. There are team members here in the US who work have worked for decades in IMSA who have never been to Le Mans and look. Vice versa, there are there are European team members who have never seen, have never driven through the tunnel at Daytona International Speedway. So right. I think the two worlds should meet, shouldn't they? And and they are taking the right steps, and and those early steps have have begun to be taken. It, it to me, it, maybe it's the situation we're in now, Lee, where we want to see that the world is pulling together, and when now when you look at the news and you see somebody being stupid. It, it, you know, like the fact that they're being stupid in this current climate really amplifies how stupid people are being because the world is trying to pull together. So if we take the wider world and pull it down to a microcosm of motorsport, what we want, surely, is everybody to work together to make motorsport stronger than it's ever been. So I agree entirely with what you've said, what Will said and what David has said, that we want the best world championships to be the best championships. We want the manufacturers to be involved. And really beyond that, I would really love to see Le Mans racing, sports car racing, helping the design of Formula One racing, helping the design of Formula E racing or whatever sport it would be so that we're not all in direct competition with each other, but we're using the, we're using the technical skills that each series has to better the world of motorsport. I, I don't want that to sound like, you know, wow, you know, what a, you know, what a wonderful vision of the future. But I think there's a great possibility. We have a, we have a great chance. And so you said it earlier on, that Will said it earlier on, we get a great possibility of coming out of this awful situation with now 
to make things better, then we should make things better. And we should make things better on every level. We want surely everybody to be pulling together in the right direction. And, and if that increases um, the quality of sports car racing and aids everything else as well at the same time, I'm all for it. Absolutely, we should do that. That's Steve, it. That's it. it. Steve Matchett for president. Well, yeah. Well, the FIA, he, he, he raises a very interesting point, and it's something that, that you know is going to come to a head within the next few months, and towards the end of this year, particularly for the smaller teams and the financial implications of what's happening this year. Um, you know, we, we have to find a way to ensure that motor racing, which has always been expensive, and it has always been prohibitively expensive, but a way in which we can save the smaller teams, help them out of this bind. And I think, you know, the big teams—they've never worked with uh, mutual benefit as one of their key functions. Sure, absolutely. begins in the boardroom. Hey guys, um, I'm getting a flashing um, light here. We're almost out of time. Time to say farewell. Um, Hobbo, Hobbo, what's for dinner tonight? What's for dinner tonight? Well, I don't know, but I won't be cooking it. I can tell you that. Uh, Mrs. Hobbs will be doing her usual magic <laughs> in the kitchen. Uh, or we'll be going around the corner to get a takeout. <laughs> See? <laughs> I think I've got a cucumber in the fridge. That's about it. <laughs> and now I'm the cooking show. There's what not an awful lot in there, but I'm, I'm so, you know, I'm so reluctant to go out of the house just to go shopping. I'm going to make sure that everything in my larder and everything in the fridge is used up. But I think dinner tonight will be a cucumber. <laughs> cucumber that's, that's sandwich. At least a cucumber sandwich. <laughs> well, well, yeah. My, if I've got any bread, I don't think I've got any bread. Well. Uh, I'm cooking roast lamb and I will be eating the leftovers for the, the remainder of the week. So, uh, oh, roast lamb, right roast potatoes, oh, nice. That's that good. Bread. You're all invited once this nightmare's over. Virtually. We're virtually nice. invited. Nice. <laughs> well, um, this has been really special uh, for us to uh, all get together for you guys during this coronavirus pandemic era and to provide you with this as part of NBC Sports Racing Week in America. So, for all of us, who dearly miss you and, and miss bringing you F1 on NBC Sports. We're still with you. We're here with you. And make sure uh, you keep yourself healthy and well and take care of your family and friends as well. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll check in again soon. Thanks so We'd much. We'd like Hello, to do that. Thanks, Thank Will. You, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Well, great to see you all. Thanks, Bye, for remember Thanks for remembering our names, Hobbo. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it written down. I've got it written down here. <laughs>